Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.2 beta 4. This is available to developers and iOS 17.2 public beta 4 will probably be out by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. Now, if you want to jump to any specific point in this video, be sure to check out the chapters in the description. Now, along with this, Apple also released a bunch of other beta and developer updates with iPad OS 17.2 beta 4, watch OS 10.2 beta 4 and others. This particular update came at 588.7 megabytes that's on my 15 pro max and was about the same size on the other devices here. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 21C5054B. We could have another beta update before it releases to the public, or we could have a release candidate next. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Now this particular update does not have a modem update coming from beta three to beta four, but hopefully it does fix overall issues with connectivity or cellular and Wi-Fi. We don't know that for sure as it will take a few days to know that. Now, as far as new features, well, the first one is something people have been wanting for a long time. If you go into your settings, then go under sound and haptics under sound and haptics, scroll down, you'll see default alerts. You can now change your default alert along with the haptics. If we go into that, you'll see at the top, we have the option for haptics. If we go into there, we have the option for a bunch of different haptic options with accent alert, heartbeat, and much more, or you can just leave it on the default one or put it to none. If you don't want anything or create your own custom vibration. Also the default notification can be changed where many people don't like the latest one they added with iOS 17. If we want to change it, we can change it to cheers, antic, cord, droplet, handoff, or many more, or go back to classic as well if you don't want to use any of those. So they're all available now. I know a lot of people have been asking, when can we change those? They didn't like the old one or even the newer ones that they've actually given for the option. Now you can finally change your different notification sounds. Also, if we go under settings, if we go back under general, and scroll down just a little bit, you'll see it says Apple care and warranty prior to this update. It actually said coverage. So Apple actually changed this where before it said coverage, which didn't make as much sense as Apple care and warranty. So now you have your Apple care and warranty information on your different devices. It's really nice that they've finally added that. Also, if we go into music, it seems they've actually removed a feature sort of. So if we go into our playlist, you'll see, I have the newest playlist. There's no option to collaborate anymore, so I can't collaborate with anyone else. However, if I go up to one I created with beta three, where it was a collaboration playlist, there's still collaborators in there, but I can't add a new one with the previous beta. I could actually collaborate on them. You can see that here where we have a different option up at the top where we can actually collaborate with someone else and pick who we want to collaborate with. For some reason, they've removed this for now. Hopefully they bring it back in the future to go along with their music update. Apple actually updated music for everyone today with their replay 2023 recap. So you'll see it says under the browse tab, check out replay to see the music you listen to most in 2023 replay and share your year in music tap on it. It brings you to a website. It may ask you to authenticate and it gets your year in replay sort of ready with a highlight reel. If we scroll down, you can see top artists, top songs and much more. So that's all available. Now, if you're using Apple music, be sure to check that out. They've also added something similar for podcasts. If we go into podcasts again, under browse and you scroll down, you'll see top charts of 2023 with shows, episodes, and much more. So all of the different creators, podcasters with top free channels and much more. So if you want to see top subscriber channels, you can see those and then listen to them for yourself. Again, they did something similar with Apple books today. Also, we have the staff picks best of 2023. So you'll see here, find the year's most popular listens as well with audiobooks, and you can scroll through it. So if you want to see staff picks best of 2023, that's now live in the books app as well. So lots of updates there as Apple prepares to wrap up this year. Additionally, there's a splash screen. Some people are seeing in the journal app. I'm not seeing it, but users on my telegram channel actually saw this where it says lock your journal. Of course we could lock it before, but this is just a little bit changed updated screen where it says require passcode. You can adjust that and more. So if I go into the journal app, it's locked, it will unlock and then I'm in. So some people are actually seeing that splash screen. 
At the time of filming this video, Apple has not updated the feedback app with the recent notes for beta four. Even the public facing site still shows beta three. Sometimes they take a while to update this and hopefully they update it soon. It's taking a bit of time. It's been over an hour since they've actually released the update and still nothing's here. So I'm not sure why they were taking so long, but maybe they'll have something new in it. As far as bugs, well, things that they've fixed so far, the keyboard is now showing quickly if you're going into spotlight search. So that's a positive. However, there's still an issue with the wallpaper bug where it dims. So if we go on the iPhone 11, that's been updated to beta four as well, you'll see it's nice and vibrant. And as I swipe up the background dims, you can see that here again. So watch how vibrant it is over by this orange and purple color here. And it sort of fades and dims out once you slide up. I've reported this in feedback. They still haven't fixed it yet. Also the notification bug is still there. That's been there since iOS 16 scroll down and you'll see it just jumps in. So I'm not sure why that is, but it just jumps in like that and they still haven't fixed it. Maybe they're working on iOS 18. So they're focused on that more since it may be a redesign. We don't really know, but that seems to make a lot of sense. Now, as far as the overall next releases, we'll talk about performance and battery in a moment, but iOS 17.1.2 was expected either today or tomorrow. At this point, it seems like it could be tomorrow or maybe Thursday. Last year, they released it on the 30th with iOS 16.1.2. It wouldn't surprise me if they released it in a day or two at this point. We know it's already in testing. Mac rumors has seen it in their website analytics. So we're just waiting for them to release it to the public at this point. As far as iOS 17.2, I would think RC or the release candidate would be probably next week. iOS 17.2 RC or release candidate or GM is what they used to call it. Seems to be likely probably sometime next week around the fifth with possibly a release to the public around the 11th. That's what they did last year on the 13th. They released it. So that makes sense. Maybe push out iOS 17.1.2 this week. And in a couple weeks, we'll have iOS 17.2. Then we'll move on to iOS 17.3 beta one and have nothing until probably the second week of January, maybe even the third week of January for that. So that's what they typically do. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.2 beta four, if you're on beta three, definitely go ahead and install it. If you're not yet and you want to try out the journal app, I would wait for the public beta and then it's typically safe to install. As far as overall performance, well, it seems to be nice and smooth. In fact, I actually noticed this when I was looking around for different features, scrolling through things seem to be nice and smooth in general, whether it's ProMotion, opening different apps. And you can see that on iOS or iPhone 11 as well with iOS 17.2 beta four. So everything seems to be nice and smooth. Although we don't have ProMotion here, I haven't seen any lag whatsoever. That could show up in a couple of days, but so far I haven't seen anything. We'll take a look at benchmarks in a moment, but as far as the overall heat of the device, it's staying fairly cool considering that I just installed an update. Let's take a quick look with the thermal camera. You can see in this case, the 15 pro max is actually cooler than the 14 pro max right now. And you'll see we're at 24.9 degrees Celsius compared to at the hottest point about 27.1 degrees Celsius. And in Fahrenheit, we have about 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit on the 15 pro max. And then on the 14 pro max, about 83.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's actually a little bit warmer on this device running beta three than it is running beta four on the latest device. So that's a bit surprising. We haven't done anything using the devices at all. I've just installed the update and that's it. As far as battery life, let's first take a look at the battery cycles. And unfortunately they haven't added the battery cycles with other devices for some reason yet. If we go to about, you'll see, I currently have 55 cycles of the battery. And if we take a look at the overall battery life, we'll go back here, go to battery, battery health and charging. I'm still at 100% on my 15 pro max and battery hasn't been great over the past week with beta three. You'll see yesterday I had two hours and 31 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 22 minutes of screen idle time. And used over 50% of my battery today. So far I've had two hours and 12 minutes of screen active time, two hours and 10 minutes of screen idle time, and only used about 25 to 30%. So you'll see here I'm at 70%. So 30% of my battery it's doing better already after the beta four install, but it will take a few days to know this for sure. So we'll have to give it a little bit of time and see if it actually gets much better. We'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up. As far as the overall benchmarks, I did run those on here. And like I said, it was a bit smoother for me. And if we go into that, you see, I had 2,907 for single core, 7,072 for multi-core. If we go back and take a look, 
compared to beta three, we're actually a little bit higher for single core, a little bit lower for multi-core, but it's so close that I wouldn't expect any difference here. It does feel a little bit smoother though, overall. And so that's everything so far in iOS 17.2 beta four. If you found anything more that I haven't mentioned in the video, let us know in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.